speak at 222XRP Future Millionaire with the side bet on XLM and Future Digibyte OG. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. A special shout out to Mother's Second Choice for allowing me to play their express written consent. Your copyrighted music. Don't be a dick. Don't play copyrighted music unless you have the express written consent of the musician, which I do. And I want to give a shout out to Mr. Anthony Carter and every member of Mother Second Choice for continuing to allow me to play your copyrighted material. It means the world to me. So Mr. Sean Crothers has sent us in some user-generated content, which I love, in the great state of Maine, where I've always wanted to go, at 8.48 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast in the United States of America. It's Saturday morning. It's foggy as shit out here, but it's nice. So, look at this beautiful picture from Maine. Thank you, Sean. And guys, don't hesitate to send in user-generated content. I love pictures. I love different things. And I will share it each and every day as user-generated content. So, thank you, Mr. Crothers. I really appreciate it. I hope your day in Maine goes fantastic. So, this is XRP. That's what we have to get past to make any kind of noise. And if we can get past that, like we talked about yesterday, we've been talking about this for quite some time, That. It might be able to come up here, and that's still another 10%, but that's the top of the symmetrical triangle. The little move yesterday, it's made about 4.6%, 4.7%, but we've been talking about this for days upon days upon days. Same thing for XLM. And guys, as we get lower to the price, when we start to drop, I will show you the exact buy prices. I'm not just going to say, oh, it's on the symmetrical triangle. You're going to have to use that. No, I'm going to tell you when it gets down here because... It's not necessarily going to be, hey, it's going to be at 19 or 19.5. Maybe this time when it comes up here, it's 20.3. But we still got to make these zones. So it's not uncommon for this to come back up to the top. I have a smaller downtrend drawn out for XLM that I think is more official. That's been playing out and it has. That's why we haven't come way to the top. And it makes perfect sense. So that's what happened with those. I mean, uh doge speaking of doge doge we have the same thing drawn out as xlm and it's been riding it absolutely beautifully and i think when we get down to that bottom level again that's when you buy it and that's when we can have a massive massive pump and even if doge didn't go all the way to the top i think you'd be looking at a pump minimum right to here so i mean even if you measured it from the bottom if you were to be patient and wait here I mean, you're talking 110% just up to there. As to where if you buy it now, hoping it gets passed here and somehow breaks up to there. It's a nice pump still, 40%. But I think patience is a virtue right now. And those who are patient are going to be handsomely rewarded. But I don't think this is done yet. That's what I keep telling you guys. I think we have to make an extension. Whether I don't know if it's going to make 30 cents. But it's got to make an extension. That's what I felt like with XRP. That's what I feel like with XLM, and they're starting to do it at least on this Saturday morning, finally. You can see the extension trying to take part. But XLM had already done it before XRP, so I mean, it's, it's you know, at least it went up this 7% and came back up. But XRP still, to me, looks like it's going to break over this, and it wants to measure up here. It, I can't help what I'm seeing. That's what I've been saying the last few days. It just doesn't make any sense for it to fall off. It has to finish its pattern, and maybe this helps it. And then there was one more that I've been 
telling you guys to keep an eye on them, that's Tezos. Because if it bounces up properly and gets back into Discovery, because it was already in Discovery, came back down, consolidated, dropped down about 25, 30%. And now if it comes back up and gets back into Discovery, you've seen this before with Solana, this thing would absolutely rock it out of control to maybe a 1X, 2X, you don't know. But I would project this to at least go up over $10 if it makes the move up, so... The like guy said, I don't influence decisions. I just give you what I see on the charts. And if you're a fan of Tezos, yesterday at $7.21 when I was on was the absolute perfect time. I think it bounced between $7.21 and $7.23 when I was on. And I told you, if you're going to buy it, now's the time. It's a gamble. Oh, yes, it's a gamble. But it's up about 3.5%, 4% from the bottom right now. No, nah, about 3.5%. Yep, about 3.5%. It's similar to what XRP is up. It's just Tezos was down when I told you guys to buy it by 1.4% on the from the daily close. But that's where I uh like XRP I'm not buying it at dollar 6. XLM was a hefty, uh, that was a good, uh, whoever picked XLM, and we'll see if this continues to ride, but I mean, we look like we're topping off, so, I was looking around, and it's like, you're looking at these, and let's just watch how it goes this morning, if you're in a position, obviously ride this and see what happens, I would expect, before we collapse, if this is the collapse, like, if, if we're not gonna go up and make another run of this to another level, I would expect this to push up right to there to 56,000 get rejected one more time. That's what I would expect. Because you're going to come up to the top and get rejected at the high point. So maybe another 1,000 on Bitcoin today, which could make it interesting for some of the altcoins. But my main eye is on Tezos right now. Can Tezos do what Solana did? It came down perfectly. It wrote a three, uh, triple bottom. When it first fell down here, it held. I know I'm talking a lot about Tezos, but there's a reason why. So, support, resistance. Come all the way back down to support. And then this mid-tier that it couldn't get back over. So now it comes back and consolidates for a third time. And now this time, are we going to break up through here? come back up here and get rejected again or are we actually going to come up to here and get back into discovery once it hit that triple bottom at seven dollars and 21 cents i bought tezos for no other reason than let's see if it can get back up i bought it at the extreme low so i kept showing it yesterday i don't want to influence decisions by saying hey i bought this or i didn't buy this but i told you guys every reason why and when I got that third touch on support and it verified it through a four hour close for two of them in a row, that's all I needed to see. Now, is it going to go to where I want it to? Probably not. But am I not going to have myself in the position? No. I'm going to have myself in the position because I can see what's going on here. If this gets into discovery, just having the chance to discover, I didn't buy it at $7.60 or $7.55 when I was asking you guys, do you think it's a buy? I waited a whole almost 30 hours. Got it down to $7.20, $7.21, where I had marked it down. And I waited for it to bounce off of this support, and it did. It's already hit it twice, so I waited for a third time. And then I didn't buy it right away. I waited for a daily close, and it stayed right there. Or not a daily close, a four-hour candle close. And when it stayed there, I waited for the next candle because I was tempted to buy it eight hours before I bought it. Because it had made a drop to here. Like seven dollars and thirty six cents, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Because I went to bed and it was at seven fifty six, and I'm like, "You know, if I'm gonna, if I've already waited here, I might as well wait to see if it rides that bottom." So I drew it out, and the bottom almost perfectly lined up with uh, down trending support. So, like, you know what? My support line might not even be as accurate as it needs to be, but that triple bounce on that support line is accurate. So I think this is pretty accurate. We could pull it in a little bit, but I like how it lines up with the arrow. So 
that's what's going on with Tezos. But like I said, we need to watch these charts because there's no guarantee that any of these do anything. And Bitcoin could just roll over right now. But let's see if we can get a push to 56,000 again. Double top that area. And then just, if it, either, it likely would collapse unless it gets a volume spike. Sorry, I had to light my joint. But that's what's going on with Tezos. That's what's going on with XRP, XLM, DGB. Bitcoin, like I said, we've been talking about this. It's getting towards the top of the trend, but it's still got a little bit of room. If you pull this out into the weekly, you can see Bitcoin actually does have, which is odd, but if you're looking at this realistically, Bitcoin still has room to 57,000. That's another 2% from here. So that's what I'm cautiously watching. Because if there's room in the symmetrical triangle, there's room in the symmetrical triangle, which means it can hit. And that's why we've been talking about XRP, about how even though it's right here, it's still got room within the symmetrical triangle to come up to $1.23. It's just got very heavy support at $1.13, which it's at right now, and that's why we drew that red line across. You could have put it at $1.12 even, $1.12, $1.13, $1.11, just somewhere in this, even $1.10 you could have did it. It's just somewhere $1.10 to $1.13 area. There's heavy resistance. So, that is what I'm watching this morning, ladies and gentlemen. And I would have a keen eye on Tezos, a keen eye on XRP, XLM, and DGB to see if we do, in fact, break through these resistance levels. For Tezos especially, if we can get back up here and break through this, look, the, look out. Because it could be interesting. <laughs> very, very interesting. So you buy support, sell resistance. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. If there's one thing I can teach you, besides hit that like button. Oh, yes, hit that motherfucking like button. It's been a long episode to start this Saturday morning. It's to buy support, sell resistance. If you can figure out the pattern we're in, draw your symmetrical triangle, draw your falling wedge, draw your channels. As long as you know where the support level is and the resistance level is within that area, you can't lose. So right now, buy support sell resistance remember that buy support sell resistance and that's why it's so hard with xrp it was not one that was on support in fact it's way up towards resistance there's a few of them that like tezos like bitcoin's getting towards the top of the zone tezos was at the low support h bar is at closer to low support it didn't quite get down there but it's closer to low support XLM is towards resistance. Well, I take that back. Towards the created resistance that we created, not the rest of YouTube. The rest of YouTube's convinced that it's in a downward symmetrical triangle, but it's from way up there. Which it did start there, but that's not the symmetrical triangle we're in. That's not relevant. The one that I drew right there is the relevant one. The lower one. You gotta diagnose the pattern, otherwise what the hell is the point? And DGB has been in this downtrend. We diagnosed that as well. As much as people want to say we're in an uptrend, if you look at it realistically, DGB is still in that downtrend and it was just in an uptrend to get back from the bottom of the trend line back to the top. That's why you sell support or buy support, sell resistance. So had you have just done that with DGB, you bought support, wrote it all the way up, and now you sell resistance. And you can see how it fell out of that uptrend even. The uptrend we had, and it had nowhere to go. All they had to do was move up a couple percent. For days. So DGB is in very dangerous territory right now. But it's doing exactly what you would have expected it to. So. This is what we're watching ladies and gentlemen. I hope this helped. Pay attention because there could be some phenomenal gains in a few of these this weekend. But when you get those phenomenal gains. Don't, make, don't forget to pay yourself. Because those phenomenal gains will turn into phenomenal paper losses. Well, paper gains that turn into losses in your pocket.